Okay, so um, I have this window up here positioned so I can record it. So um, this all go forward from here. So basically what I've done in here really quick, let me zoom in here. I have an, a new image that I created. If I go under image adjustments here, we can, uh, excuse me, if we go over to image size, we're going to check the size. It's 11 by 17 by 300 DPI, okay? I have a couple photos that I've already started to throw in there. These are photos that I put up on the classroom blog. So if you visit Dart 135, there, you know, all of these are up here. And what I did is I came in here really quickly and I just started to take out some of the background where I just have parts of the castle. And this is a way that that a lot of artists work when they start with photo blends and then they start painting on top of it. What we're going to do is I want you to get used to bringing in parts of different images. So if you look here, I have four different sort of castle images. I have this side here. Um, I have this front piece here. Now what you're going to notice is going to be some color variations. Like when I look at these two, I might decide like, wow, I really like this foundation down here, but then this castle that's up above here doesn't match the color whatsoever. And the perspective's a little bit off too. So one of the things that we're gonna have to do is A, we're gonna try to blend the colors together. And one of the ways that we're gonna be able to do that is we can come over under image adjustments, okay? So if I come under image adjustments, and I told you guys the hotkeys the other day, control U, which is for hue and saturation, and control B are probably the most commonly used that I like to use. And then I like to use levels, control L. Um, and there's another one I use too, which is curves, but we'll talk, it's control M. Talk about that a little bit later. So right now, one of the goals I like to do is I can modify the perspective on this guy and I could get it to try to fit in here, or I could change this a little bit later. So get some images that you like that tend to be working together, you know. So in order to do this, you have to move your artwork around, uh, or I should say your, um, not your artwork, but your, your layers around on different layers to see what sort of blends together. So as I move this upwards, I sort of like the fact that I can maybe have this in the foreground somewhere, and then I might be able to come back in here a little bit later and move this castle structure right here and then I could build this giant sort of castle up on top of it if I want. However, though, let's just real quick note, let's talk about the perspective that's happening. Um, I showed you yesterday how we could change perspective on an object by grabbing parts of the side and by manipulating it, and then we could fix any damaged areas. Right now, where's the horizon line inside this piece, which is really important? These edges right here are um, converging downward to a vanishing point about here, and then this wall line is also converging downward to about here. If I look for the perfect horizontal line in here, it's going to be somewhere about right in here. So that horizon line is pretty low there. So anything that I build upward in terms of a castle, I'm going to be looking up at, and the angles are going to be converging downward to those vanishing points, okay? If I want to use that one accordingly, okay? So um, let's say I did want to use this go back to that castle top right there okay one of the things I'm going to need to do is try to get this to blend in with the color to see if there's a match sometimes it's not possible to match things and you have to go and look for some other photos that you could blend in okay I can I'm going to adjust the perspective on these a little bit later but for right now I could grab this and I could start to mess with it so having this layer selected I'm going to come over and go to control U and see what happens if I start messing with the hue slider Okay, if I start sliding this around and look at what it's doing, it's actually adjusting more of the hue on the top there. So perhaps I don't want to, to mess with that right now because this had a different color up on there. So what I can do, if I go to control B, now I can start looking, well, there's lots of yellow and orange in this wall right here. So what if I come over here and there are highlights? What if I come over to the highlights right here and I start to put a lot more yellow into this and I start putting some more red in here, okay? I can see if I could get this to start to blend in a little bit easier. And even right there, I'm getting a lot closer to what that wall was than what it originally was. You know, so if I hit OK right now and say, yeah, I want to keep that, let me go to midtones. I might even adjust a little bit of the midtones as well. That's a little bit too much. It gets too red there. Okay, so I can try to get this to blend in the best that I can. And then once I hit a certain point and I start to like it, then I can start to build off of that. But part of the blend, the colors do have to match in how you add to something, okay? 
this is in a three point sort of upshot so it could possibly work right here however this bridge is not working so I could come in here and start to modify part of this or take some of it apart okay one thing I wanted to do is I really like this large sort of stump right here okay and I thought I'd show you guys a couple little cool things um, that you can do in Photoshop um, this photo had an old sail in front of it right here do you see that so what I can do something that's pretty neat let me see if this will work right here watch I'm gonna select this part of the light post right there okay and I'm gonna come under edit okay and um, give me a second here there we go I'm not on the right layer there we go and now I'm gonna come under edit and I want to go to not that let's go to fill and under fill where you normally would fill a color if you scroll down here there's another option called content aware and if I hit OK that light post has disappeared and what Photoshop did is it went in there and it took some surrounding pixels that were around that light post and it filled it in and it just deleted that little light post for me which is a really cool tool sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but let's try it like right here I'm going to select that little light post that's sticking out right there okay so I'm going to come back under edit I'm going to go to fill again let's go to content aware hit OK and look at that light post is gone Okay, so it took the pixels that were right around that area and it threw them in there instead because it knows that I didn't want that. So where that's a benefit for me is I could quickly come in here and take like some multiple areas just by holding shift. Okay, and then I could tell it to fill and get rid of that. So watch, fill, and I'm gonna hit okay. And now those are gone. See that? So now I could just I could mess around in this, or I could also do this. I could take a brush that I have, I could swab the green that's right here. And I can just sort of paint right on top of this. No one's going to notice any difference. That's something we're going to do a little bit later as we're working into this. I have some different colors, so I'm going to grab a couple of these different colors that are here. I'm going to sort of just dabble around, and I'm going to try to paint out any of the information that I don't want. I can come back a little bit later. Now, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about brushes yet. I have some brushes that I can give you today a little bit later and I'm also going to do another lecture too it's just so much information to cover so fast beginning Photoshop class right and I'm going to also show you some other brushes that you can load into Photoshop that are default brushes that are already in there okay that you could use but for the most part I'm just blocking in right now and the brush that I'm using is called the block in brush or that's what I refer to it as because I'm not really painting any detail I'm just blocking stuff out like I don't want that light post that's in there so I'm just going to come over and just sort of paint it out right here Okay, sort of that easy. All right, and if I come over here, so look, I have that really nasty sort of light pole right there. Let me see if I can come in here and select this and see if I can get that to fill. So let's go to edit and then we'll go to fill. It's on content aware. Hit OK. Yeah, they did that pretty good. There's some times where it doesn't do it well, and then there's some times where it does it very well. I could select that whole area, but I'm afraid it'll select something else. Fill. actually having some pretty good luck today sometimes it won't work where this really comes in handy is if you ever had to manipulate a photo where like a person standing in front of a brick wall and you wanted to get the person out and you want the brick wall you just select the person and it'll put the brick wall right in the back there okay that's all right it's pretty good so far um, let me get try to get this the rest of this pull out right here what happens okay there you go not bad see I've re re resolved a lot of that already um, let's say I wanted to add another wall down here let me let me clear this up real quick let's get some of that out let's get this guy out here okay remember I'm holding shift to with my lasso so I can add multiple selections at a time edit fill content aware there those are gone now so something I could do really quick, I'm just taking my lasso and I'm just going to draw over part of this that I want right here. Okay, I'm going to copy that now. I'm going to paste that. I'm going to bring it down to here. Okay, so I'm going to make a secondary wall down here. I'm going to go to transform real quick, control T, 
right click inside that box and I'm going to go to distort. So distort is going to allow me to grab that part of the wall and then I could grab this part of the wall. See that? I could come up and sort of get that to match the exact perspective where this is going back and receding to a vanishing point. That looks like it's working right there and so on. Okay, and then this is receding back. That's starting to work pretty good right there. Okay, so and I actually sort of like how this part's overlapping right here. So what I can do right now is um, we talked about the stamp tool, right? Let's say I select this right in here and I want to stamp only this area. So I'm going to select the area that I want to do stamping in right now, which is going to be this area right there. I'm going to come over here, hit stamp, and then see if I can come over here and get some of this wall to, to go right in here. So let's stamp that, actually right there. My stamp set at 10, 20%, so I'm not getting much coming out of it right now. That's pretty cool. I did that pretty fast, right? Now I have that sort of wall in the front, and then let's say I want to grab now part of this, and I want to have that structure come in there. I might, I like that idea of a, like a broken wall that's been sort of, you know, falling apart in some pieces or whatever. So I like how I ended up with this right here. Let me come in here. I'm going to erase a little bit of that blue that's in there, off of there, from the old photo. Okay. And what I could do here to just save myself time, I could try to stamp that, but I could also just come in here like this and select it and copy and paste it and just put it down. Or something else I like to do is this. I might, I'm just going to draw where I imagine that wall coming down like this. And I could add to it in a couple more minutes here. And I'm just going to select this whole little area in here. I'm just going to grab a brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a local color down of what that color is right there. So let me zoom in and show you what I mean. Okay, so if I look, every object has what we call local color. Okay, so like the local color of this shirt right now that I have is a blue. And if I come under and if I stand under a light source, I'm going to start to have highlights on that blue. So the highlights on that blue are actually white mixing in with the blue color, right? And then where I get like a dark shadow, okay, which is being opposite where the core shadow is, that core shadow is actually a little bit of black that's being added into that local color that creates the darker value, right? So we have the base local color of my shirt is this blue. The highlight of it is this blue with white in it, and the dark shadow of my shirt is the blue with a little bit of black in it, right? So now I could come over here. I have highlights that are hitting part of that, but I could come in here and swab sort of a darker color that's in there. And see, look, I could just paint this in really fast. I can block this in. This is just a local color. So it's and it's not going to do much right now as I'm looking at it because it's just sort of a boring tone color. There's no highlights or anything on it, right? But now what I could do is I could come in here. Let's say I wanted to try to mimic this. I could grab some of these, these little white highlights here. And part of you are like, well, how are you doing that, Phil? How are you getting that color out there real quick? Well, I'm pressing Alt. When I have my paintbrush, so when I hit B and I'm painting, okay, if I hold Alt down real quick, Alt gives me, okay, that eyedropper. So uh, in almost all aspects of all the tools, Shift, Control, and Alt, and it changes if you're on a Mac, by the way, but it's very similar. Every tool, I can hit a button, and it allows me to make some type of quick change. So as I'm working here, I can start to grab some of these highlights right here. And see this? I can just start to sort of pencil in what some of these highlights might look like. And I'm just doing this really, really fast here right now, okay? I'm trying to create a little bit of a base here. So I'm putting some highlights on top of that local color, okay? Like so. And then what I can do is, I think I had it in the, nope. Actually, I already have this in my, my paste memory. I'm going to hit paste right now. Take my lasso, I just paste it down another layer, and take all that and delete it. Deselect, take my move tool, I'm going to move this back over here right erase and what I'm gonna do really quick to blend that in is I'm gonna transform that and I'm just gonna sort of put that in there like that and I'm gonna erase a little bit of the edge on there okay and then I'm gonna blend it in I'm gonna drop the opacity down and the reason why it'll blend in nice is because I already painted a little bit of the local color in there you see how that blends in right there 
So I have a little bit of that detail in there and it's on top of the local color. Then I could come back in with stamp now. But wait, 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 before I stamp, let's commit. Let me merge it down to the layers that, uh, that it's on. Because I have that layer that's on top of that wall right there. So I'm going to select these two. Does anyone remember how to merge layers? Yeah. Control E because E looks like layer tips right on the E, right? That's right. So Control E, I merge that layer. Now I can come back here. I'm going to hit S for stamp. I'm going to grab some of that right there. I'm going to come over here and it shows me what it's going to look like. I'm going to go to 50% grade and just sort of lightly pencil some of that in. Come over here. I'm going to put, oops, made a mistake there. See that? Control Z and Alt. Now, just a reminder, when I Control Z, Control Z only lets you go back one step. It's really stupid. I wish it was like the, all the other software applications. I can just hit Control Z and go back. After you hit Control Z once, you have to hold down Alt and Control to go back numerous times. Okay. Um, and what's funny about that is I worked with a buddy of mine. We learned Photoshop together, or we're using it back together in the studio in 1998. And I called him, and I was telling him about that. And he goes, dude, I'm always using it because we learned it one way when the software was different. And now they've changed it, and they keep adding cool stuff onto it. So anyway, I'm going to come in here, swab some of that, and I'm going to put a little bit of that down here and so on. I could just, you know, I could even copy and paste. But see right there, that looks somewhat convincing. And I just did that super fast. And now I have another wall that's sitting outside of that structure, right? And even if I wanted to do more, let's say I wanted to make it look like there are little details here and here that are too much the same, right? So let's say I want to, I don't want these details to match up completely to there. Well, I could just grab some of that color right in there and just, you guys know what stippling is, remember that? Stippling, stippling works great for digital painting to start off with something. I'm, I'm just grabbing the local color, stip a little bit. I'm going to grab the highlight, go up to like 90 or 100 percent, make my brush a little bit smaller. Then I'm just going to stipple some little highlights on there, and you barely even notice it. It starts to blend in. Let's say I want to come over here. Where in my image right now, where's my light coming from? Right. Huh? From the right side. That's right. That's really important for me because I have to understand anything else I put in here has to match that direction of light. So if my image, if the light's coming this way, what I can do is I can watch, I could come in here right now and just erase. Like imagine there's a, maybe there's a previous war. Now look, I can't really see what I'm doing because of the layer underneath, so I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna erase like a big chunk out of this. Maybe there was a war and there was a huge, you know, they were launching giant stones at it and this is all, cracked and all messed up, right? Well, look, I'm just going to take that. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to copy that, paste that. It's on the layer above. I'm going to drop that underneath that layer. See, and I can put that right here. I'm going to transform it, turn it over, move it up a little bit like so. Okay, hit enter. I'm going to go to erase. Erase that little highlight out of there like that. And then I'm going to go to V again, which is my move tool. Something that's really cool too, if you hit V, you can use your arrows on your keyboard to get really precise movement. You see that? So I'm just using my arrows really quick by hitting V. Oops, wrong. I accidentally hit W. I didn't mean to do that. Deselect. Go back. I was going to my eraser to erase any leftover. See that? It's pretty cool. So now I did that really fast. I'm going to commit. So I'm going to merge those two together. Now it's one layer. So now when I open up the other one above it, Besides the little bit of blue on there, that's okay. That blue was from the original photo. I could go back in later. I look for that stuff later. I don't get into all that detail now. I'm just building up on top of my image to make this really cool looking castle structure, right? And this is how I like to work when I'm doing something like this. I build something. Now this wall starts to look different from this wall except for one thing. Does anyone else see anything? Look at the shadows of the trees. They're in the same spot, right? So I need to figure out a way to sort of fix that. And let's go in there, let's try. There's a couple things we can do. One, I can select part of this. Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste that. Oops, copy, paste. It puts it on a new layer automatically. I could bring part of that wall over here. I'm gonna try to match, there's these lines in here where it has to match sort of perfect, okay? And I can get that in there uh, about maybe a little bit shorter. So I get those to blend in. Look, that's not bad. That's sort of, that's actually pretty good, right? It blended it in. I noticed this is almost the same as that. 
So what I might do, I can get really picky with this, is I might take a little chunk from like here, copy and paste, and then I'm going to move that and put it in the middle there just to make it look a little different. See that? Just to create a little variation. So whenever I make a move or, or move part of a photo together with another one, I always come back and do one or two more steps to blend it in a little bit to make it look a little bit different. So there, that's done. I'm going to commit to that. Okay, and like I said, I come back later and I can paint, I can just zoom in like this to my photo and then I can just take my eraser and I can just lightly erase out that blue that's in there, but I don't have to worry about it right now. I want to keep, when I work, I like to listen to music. I'll play music in class for you guys. I, I believe in something called the artistic flow, which is your artistic energies that are coming out. You're getting into the mode of something and that's actually a really true point. Um, because your artistic flow is when your your brain, you have two hemispheres of your brain, right? Your left, which is your analytical side, and your right, which is your creative side. You start you start to turn off your left hand side of your brain, so you can focus on the creative side. When you do that, that's why you sit down and like you draw or paint, and then you look up and you're like, oh my god, it's been two and a half hours. You don't realize that because you've shut down the left side of your brain, which is the time the side that keeps track of time your organization side and so on to focus on the right side of your brain okay so um, th that's a great way to work is to sort of get into it I'm not going to worry about all the details right now I'm going to keep building this up and I'm gonna, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pause the recorder real quick take a moment and I'm going to start copying and pasting and building a cool upward structure of a castle okay I just started here with the base but I just wanted you to sh show you a couple basics on how I you know start to, to get rolling and now I'm going to start working on the upward structure right here. Okay, so one second. Okay, so what I started doing, I forget exactly where I just left off. I put that crack in the one wall. What I did is I took this centerpiece right here. Let me go ahead and um, show you. I want you guys to think about this. What I did is I took this centerpiece right here and I started to duplicate that. So my goal is to make this really cool looking castle right now. And even if I rough it out, and get it there I could come back and work on a little bit later I'm just going to use the images that I have here now what I like to do is that things are going to start to get really crazy if I don't label my layers so I'm going to come over here and then double tap on the layer real quick I'm going to type in wall I'm going to put ol for wall overlay okay so I know what that is um, what I like to do is this main part I've been working on I'm going to label that main that's really important it's going to save me a lot of time because anything I copy and paste from here out I'm either going to be putting on top or underneath that. Okay. So what I did is I grabbed this lower sec this round cylinder shape right here, and I came over and oh, not there. I I grabbed it and I transformed it and then I dropped it. I pasted it and then I dropped it under the main layer so it could maybe look like something in the back there. I don't know exactly where I'm going with this right now. This is I'm just going to have fun. Okay. So after I did that. I went ahead and I put another one in here and I raised this one up a little bit. I transformed it and squashed it a little bit like that. Okay, And it is in the back right now and it is the same value as this right here but I could change it later. Since it's in the back it's going to be a little bit lighter because of atmospheric perspective. So after that I came down here and, oh not that one, what did I do next? Hold on a minute. Okay, Then I put one up here sort of in the front. Okay. And that's sort of part of the wall I had. But then what I did is I grabbed this midsection right in here. Do you see this? Let me take off that overlapping piece. Okay. Let me show you real quick here. All right. So I'm going to grab this wall and I'm going to copy and paste that and start building a side wall to my castle to make some variations there. You'll notice when I pasted that in there, that is not matching the side wall, right? This would be in shadow because it's in the back area. It might have a little bit of light coming across it. Okay, so let me show you really quick how I could, if I wanted to cheat that, how I could. Okay, first of all, when I put this, excuse me, I keep grabbing the wrong layer here. Let me find the one that I'm on. I'm, there it is. Okay, I, I touched something else. I grabbed this. Look, I made it smaller because I know as it recedes, how when scale recedes back along that wall, it's going to be smaller. Okay. I don't need to know the exact size, but I know I want it to be maybe somewhere about like, let's say about like right in here, okay? Um, I, let's say I want to continue the pattern down and then want to have it hit this ground plane 
and I want to have it go down. So what I'm going to do really quick here is I'm going to come into the main layer, and I know it's the main because I've already painted it. I'm just going to block in a rough value of that green going across here. That way I have a good idea of how this stone structure might come down to hit. Okay, there. So I'm going to block that in super fast, just so that it doesn't matter what brush. Just using a base brush right now, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is come back up here to this overlay, and I want to get some of that pattern to come down here a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and select some of this. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it, but first I'm going to put down a little bit of a local value, right? So I've already selected what I'm going to copy and paste, okay? And then what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to grab this. That's sort of the local value, this sort of orange. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paint some of this down real fast. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to get some highlights in there. Do my little stipple along some of it here. Here the values are getting a little bit darker. It's all right. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just have something that's there. I'm going to hit paste. I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to bring that down on top of this like so. I'm going to transform it, and it would be transforming anyway. It would be getting a little bit larger as it's receding downward. I can probably even get away with something like that. Okay, and I'm going to hit Erase, go down to like 10% by hitting one on my keyboard. I'm going to come in here and lightly sort of blend some of this off, and then I'm going to drop the opacity of that layer down just a little bit like so. Try to get it to blend in there a little bit more. Let's say that's okay for right now. I'm going to go ahead and commit to that. Okay. Now the one thing that's happening on this, erase that a little bit of, oops, overspray right there. I'm going to erase that off. The one thing that's happening is that's still not matching the shadow value of the wall. So to do that really quick, what I'm going to do, first of all, light's coming at an angle, so it's going to hit. So some of this is going to be hit here, right? And since some of that gets hit, it's going to stay that sort of bright nice orange color, but then some of it's going to have to drop into this darker value right here. So the fact that I've had perspective and I understand how light travels across cylindrical surfaces, this is a cylinder, light's going to hit right here, and then it's going to start to curve around and wrap over as that cylinder's wrapping. So what I'm going to do really quick is grab my, my uh, loose or my lasso tool, not the line lasso, I'm going to come to right here, I'm going to sort of come over here and lightly come down like that and draw. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, I'm going to go to levels, and I'm just going to darken this up a little bit to make it look like it's in more of a shadow. Now what's happening when I darken it right now is it's darkening the orange tint in there as well. So what I'm going to do is if I come over to control U, okay, I can darken it a little bit just like this. I'm just using the lightness option there. Do you see that? So it's starting to look like it's in a little bit of shadow right there. Okay. And I can also drop a little bit of the saturation down. See that? I'm, why do I want to drop the saturation down? Well, since it's in shadow, I'm not going to have as much color sticking out. Why? Because how color and light works is that when a light source is coming across, you have basically like white light and it's hitting a color, it's going to bring out all the chroma of it and all the intense color. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get this to blend in with this. And this wall is the same as this wall in the front. The difference is, just like in a cube in basic drawing, this is in shadow right here. And since that's in shadow, I'm just going to knock that back the saturation a little bit because there's going to be less light hitting it. And then I'm also darkening it up a little bit. So I actually like what's happening about there. I'm going to hit deselect. Okay, that's a pretty large edge going across there. What I could come in and do is, as a shadow cast going across here, it's going to start to blur up a little bit. So I can worry about that a little bit later. What I could do is, if I you have a soft, round, fuzzy brush like this, which all you guys do, I could come in a little bit later and I could grab some of that and I could just start to paint a little bit of that over on top and I can blur some of the edge. The other thing I could do is I can go into stamp. I can go down to like 20% stamp and then I could just sort of stamp some of that information. And I could basically come in here and start to blur part of that together. But I'm going to worry about that a little bit later. I just want to keep building right now. Okay, so the next thing I did is I came in here, remember I talked about that wall? I took that wall, so how did I know where it was? I just went to main like this, 
and I selected this wall right in here and I copied and I pasted it okay so let's let me show you what it looks like there it is I copied and I pasted it right there okay um, and then after that I took this part right here that's popping out there and then I pasted that in excuse me right there see I dropped it down a step so it looks a little different so now this wall all I did was select this area right here copy and paste it through it here but see how it now looks like there's another secondary level before the other level okay and then um, I came over and then I pasted and enlarged one other part of the wall there okay like that so now it's looking different this wall I can easily change it to make it not look like this wall in fact let's something else I can do first thing I want to do is I like what's happening right here this transition of that wall it's starting to look like a cool castle I'm gonna to commit to those layers real quick so I'm gonna merge all those layers together so they're on one okay and then I'm gonna come in here and I want to make this look a little different than this well there's a couple things I could do watch here's one People, the eye tends to look for variation of shape and detail. Okay, so right now I have the same size holes going across this whole thing here. So watch, I can come in here right now and I can take this guy right there and I'm going to copy him and then paste. And where I paste it, it's, I'm just going to make these holes a little bit larger. Maybe this is where archers come over and they sit out of, right? So I'm going to have one there. And then what I'm going to do is, just to put in my computer's memory, I'm going to select that area and hit copy and now it's in the memory so if I hit paste later I can just paste them along okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do I'm gonna select these little windows right here and I'm gonna get rid of them how am I gonna get rid of them what's the tool I showed you earlier today exactly edit fill content aware hit OK oh not good that's actually selecting part of the window that I had. So that's not going to work. So something else I could do is I'm just going to come over here to stamp, grab part of this, and just say, you know what, hold on. My bad. That's why I did that. See, Phil's moving too fast. I wasn't on the, the layer. Now it'll probably do the content aware. I was on something else. Let's try this now. Edit. And then let's go down here. What am I doing? Fill and content aware. There, it did it, no problem there. I was on the wrong layer, that was my fault, okay? So I'm gonna select this one, that little guy, that little guy right, edit, let's go to fill, boom, okay? So now I fill those, what's in my, what's in my computer memory still? That window that I copied and pasted, right? So now I'm just gonna hit V, which is, uh-oh. Well, I was going to hit V. It's right here. So I'm going to get it back. I'm going to come over here, select it, copy it. Now I'm going to merge these two together. Deselect. I'm going to hit paste. And then it's going to paste that window. Now, what, the reason why I did that is now I can come over here and I can position that window going all the way down to make this top layer look different from what was down here. And the eye is going to see that. So watch. I'm going to move this over here and get that about there. Now some of you might not know perspective well enough, but you need to think about, I can see this line merging down here, right? So if you have to make yourself a guideline to get the windows in there, that's really easy to do. Watch, let me show you. I'm gonna create another layer right here. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna label this, I'm gonna call this guide, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, I wanna pick a color that I could see that's really easy, like white, okay? I'm gonna take my brush right now, I'm on a separate layer. I'm going to shrink my brush down, make sure I have a hard edge brush. Okay. And I'm going to go to B, 100%. I'm going to hold shift and draw a line straight across. See that? That line's a little thick, so I'm going to make my brush a little thinner. There we go. Now I have a straight line across, right? Then that's on a separate layer. So what I can do is come over here, hit T. I can transform it. I can rotate it into place. That's still off. If I transform it a little bit more, you can see that's about the same angle as that. See that? A little bit more because I'm picky. There we go. And then I'm going to drop that down. I actually did it a little bit too much. Right about there. Okay. And then I'm going to duplicate that layer. Okay. It's just a guideline. I'm going to bring that right down to here. Now you can see that's way too wide there. Why? Because as something converges away from us in perspective, it gets smaller. So I'm going to hit transform. And actually, I can do this really easy just by hitting distort. I'm going to grab that corner, and I'm going to bring that up to about there. 
There we go. That looks right. Now I have a guideline. I'm going to take my guides, I'm going to merge them together so I can see them right there. And as I come over here and start positioning my windows in there, I can make sure they position and fit exactly according to depth and scale. So now I can move that next one over. I'm going to transform him down a little bit, make him a little bit smaller. You just have to space him correctly. You can eyeball that. There's a way to mathematically figure that out, but you don't have to do that. So now I'm just duplicating the layer, and I'm just moving that window down, transforming it, making it a little bit smaller every time. About there, let's say, right? Does that look good? About there, let's grab that, duplicate that. Oops, what did I do? Let's try that again. Duplicate, okay. And here I'm just going to erase that little tip off of there. You can just erase it to fit it in. And I'm going to do one more because I like prime numbers. And I use prime numbers in any aspect of designing. Okay. And then I'm going to hit erase. Because that part's be a little bit of that's being over. A little too much there. Let me command Z. There we go. It's right like that. Okay. That's it. And take off the guidelines. See what I have? I now have a secondary wall to my castle that has windows in it that makes it look totally different, doesn't it? It doesn't look the same whatsoever. And then the fact that I just took this little area and copied and pasted it in here, now I have these cool little overlaps happening. So now I could come in here and I could define a little bit of a wall. Heck, I could even come in here now. I just had this idea. See, I have this nice light coming across. I could make this look like it's been hit by stone and it's all carved up and fallen apart, right? Just by doing this, I could come over here and select this area right in here. Oh, sorry, I'm doing a bad habit, which is working with my mouse. Let me come in here and just select it correctly like that. All right, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to make sure I have so many layers now, I need to commit a little bit. I copied and pasted all those windows right there, so I'm going to select all of these, and I'm just going to merge all these together and go um, boom make it all into one right there. I still have some blue in there I can get rid of later. I'm going to select this now. So what I'm going to do is label this and call it my inner wall. Okay. Now that that's done, I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to grab some of that orange and watch. I'm going to come over here, transform. I'm going to go to warp. And now I'm going to just stretch this out a little bit. Put some of it going down this way. Actually, warp isn't working as well as I wanted it to be. It actually blurred it a little bit. So I'm just going to do this, which is even easier. I'm going to just take that. Now, that's I'm, look, I'm on a separate layer. I just pasted that little highlight there. Do you see that? I could just select it as a selection, hit V, and I could just move it like that. Okay. Now I'm going to copy it and paste it and just come over here. And then I'm going to stretch it out and maybe transform it a little bit more like that okay now the one thing I didn't do on that is I didn't paint any local color underneath like I did before in a couple of the other examples so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna merge these together and I'm just gonna come in here create another layer right underneath that one and I'm gonna just grab some of that and I'm gonna paint a little bit of local color underneath there so I can get a feel of how I want the wall to be sort of flowing and I could come in and put a couple little highlights across this if I like. I can merge these together. And now I'm just going to do my little stipple thing. Okay. So there, now I'm starting to create a whole part of the wall that looks like it's it's coming down and it's all destroyed. It gets a little blurry in here, so to fix that, I'm going to grab some of this fine little detail right there. I'm going to copy that. Paste. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. I got to go back to the inner wall layer. I'm just going to copy that and paste that, bring that over and just sort of drop it right up on top. I need to move it up a little bit. There it goes, like that. Actually, It's not bad, just leaving it right sort of in there, okay? All right, I'm going to merge these all together so it's all in one layer. 
and then I'm just going to bring a little bit, see where this goes gray? It's a little darker in here, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this wall texture right in here, copy that, paste it, and I'm going to bring a little bit of that right up in here. Do you see that? To sort of blend it together, I might darken it just a teeny bit here, like that, and then I'm going to leave it right now. The eye doesn't need to see. That's enough for the eye to see, where if I zoom out, it looks like a separate wall. You see that falling down? Okay, so here I am. I'm about, so far while talking to you guys, I work a little slower. I'm about 40 minutes into this, and I'm starting to create this whole new structure that could be this giant new castle. I have little tops to it. Um, I have this cool wall that I'm building. I could get in here and start building something here, and then I could start working on this back side. Um, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to jump in here. You got to think of, of using parts of your photo as cookie cutters. You're selecting something, you're copying and pasting it, you're moving something to the side, you're cutting a piece out of it, and then you can blend something else into it. And that's how you start to create your own fun little concept or design. Once I get this all done, I'm going to go ahead, pause the recorder again, work on it for about 20 minutes. I'll show you what I did and where I'm at with it. And then I'll just let you guys work for a little too. Okay. Are there any questions before I stop this? Because I, I tend to work fast if I did something too fast or whatever. Everyone sort of understand what we're doing. I'm just trying to get you used to the basic tools in Photoshop, copying and pasting, using image adjustments. Okay. We talked about uh, Puppet Warp yesterday if you want to bend something. We've now talked about the content aware option that you have and start to build something else. And again, don't forget to put in that local base color if you want to put uh, a photo blend on top of something and allow you to blend it in. Okay? And I'll pause right here.